Kerala is bestowed with the fine weather. Everyone here is happy, enough fresh water and a more suitable situation for vegetations also. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Sri Lankan Tamil asylum seekers leave the Australian ship at last. Train accident in Jaipur, seven got killed. Obama affirms commitment to Asia. Accused 9 bar 11 mastermind to face civilian trial in New York. Significant amount of water on moon, NASA confirms. Car bomb adds to toll in northwest Pakistan. Now the news in detail. Tamil asylum seekers leave ship. 22 Sri Lankan asylum seekers have come ashore from an Australian customs ship anchored in Indonesia's waters, Indonesian officials have said. They were among 78 ethnic Tamils on the Oceanic Viking moved off Bintan Island near Singapore, who had refused to leave the ship. The Oceanic Viking picked them up during its duties in Indonesia's maritime search zone last month. The 22 men are being taken to Bintan to have their asylum claims processed. The Tamils will be processed at an Australian-funded detention centre at Tangjung Pyangong in Bintan. Indonesia agreed to take the asylum seekers last month as part of an agreement with Australia to cope with an influx of migrants to both countries. The Tamils initially refused to leave the ships, saying that they wanted to be taken directly to Australia. The remaining 56 Tamils are still on the Oceanic Viking. The Australian government was reported to have offered the Tamils resettlement within four to six weeks if they agreed to leave the ship. But Prime Minister Kevin Rudd said their claims were not being fast-tracked. Immigration Minister Chris Evans most of the Tamils could end up in Australia if their claims were found to be genuine. Jaipur train accident kills seven. At least seven people have been killed and dozens more were injured when an express train crashed near the Indian city of Jaipur. All 15 carriages of the Mantor Express traveling between Jodhpur and Delhi were derailed. Rescuers are using metal cutting equipment to try to free the people trapped in three overturned carriages. The BBC has reported that an Indian railway has poor safety profile. It said, India's vast railway network carries many millions of people daily, but has a poor safety record. Last week, 14 people were killed when a passenger train rammed into a truck at an unmanned railway crossing in Uttar Pradesh. And in October, two passenger trains collided near the city of Madhura in northern India, killing at least 22 people. I hope this will open up the eyes of our official and the conditions will be better, a safe traveling for everyone. Obama affirms commitment to Asia. U.S. President Barack Obama has welcomed a bigger role for China on the world stage and pledged to pursue greater cooperation with Asian countries. Speaking in Tokyo, he said the U.S. would not be cowed by the North Korea's nuclear threats and that his commitment to the security of Asia was unshakable. Mr. Obama also called on Asian leaders to pursue a balanced economic growth. Early on Saturday, he flew to Singapore for an Asia-Pacific economic summit a few hours earlier than planned. His trade representative, Ron Kirk, who is already at APEC meeting, says the U.S. wants barriers to trade and investment removed to promote an open global trade system. Mr. Obama will round off his week-long Asian tour with stops in China and South Korea. 
The crew of a UK military ship watched as the British couple were taken hostage by Somali pirates but were ordered not to open fire, it has emerged. The RFA Wave 9 did not act for fear of endangering the couple's lives, the Ministry of Defense said. Paul and Rachel Chandler, aged 59 and 55, from Kent were ordered off their yacht by gunmen in Indian Ocean the early hours on 23rd October. U.S. knew the Fort Hood suspects tie to a radical cleric. In our last issue, we have carried the news about the shooting incident in a U.S. military base at Fort Hood, in which 13 people have been killed and several injured. Intelligence agencies intercepted communications last year and this year between the military psychiatrists accused in the shooting to death in people at Fort Hood, text a radical cleric in Yemen known for his incendiary anti-American teachings. But the federal authorities dropped an inquiry into the matter after deciding that the messages from the psychiatrist Major Nidal Malik Hassan did not suggest any threat of violence and concluding that no further action was warranted, government officials said on Monday. Major Hassan's 10 to 20 messages to Anwar al Avlaki, once a spiritual leader at a mosque in suburban Virginia where Major Hassan worshipped, indicate that the troubled military psychiatrist came to the attention of the authorities long before last Thursday's shooting rampage at Fort Hood, but the authorities left him in his post. Counter-terrorism and military officials said Monday night that the communications first intercepted last December as part of an unrelated investigation were consistent with a research project the psychiatrist was then conducting at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington on post-traumatic stress disorder. There was no indication that Major Hassan was planning an imminent attack at all or he was directed to do anything. One senior investigator said he and other officials spoke on the condition of anonymity, saying the case was under investigation. China's tough flu measures appear to be effective. Few farmers in the southern village gave much thought to the epidemic that had begun spreading rapidly in the United States early this summer until the authorities sealed its hundred residents of the outside world about a week. It turned out to be a visitor from California had shown symptoms of swine flu virus or H1N1 when he arrived for a funeral. Quarantines and medical detentions are among the aggressive measures that Chinese officials have taken to slow the transmission of H1N1, which quickly spread worldwide after being diagnosed first in North America. To protest from around the world, China isolated entire plane loads of people entering the country if anyone on the plane exhibited flu-like symptoms. Local authorities cancelled school classes at the slightest hint of the disease and ordered students and teachers to stay home. China was virtually alone in taking such a harsh measures, which continued throughout most of the summer. Now, Chinese and foreign health officials say that some of those contested measures more easily adopted by an authoritarian state may have helped slow the spread of the disease in the world's most populous country, China. The most populous country of the world, China, is still having less a number of the incidents of swine flu. China has not had to cope with crush of cases and it began administering a vaccine of swine flu in early September, the first country to do so. Foreign officials also say China demonstrated an unusual openness to sharing information about H1N1 with its citizens and other governments in contrast to its secretive approach to the near pandemic of severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS a few years ago. That is not to say that China has been spared. On, tu on Tuesday, health ministry officials reported an explosive growth of H1N1 on the mainland because of the onset of winter, with 5,000 new cases in the previous three days, pushing the total to more than 59,000. At least 30 people have died here after contracting H1N1. 
Extra data on the virus are hard to pin down. Many more cases are suspected than confirmed. And countries often use different methods to identify the cases. Still, the indications in China are much more positive than those in India. Like China, India has more than a billion people, many living in poor conditions, rural conditions, and was exposed to the virus after it had been identified in the West. The Indian Health Ministry has reported 505 deaths so far. The United States, where the virus was spreading before it was identified in the spring, has reported more than million cases and about 4,000 deaths in a population of 300 million.